What does it mean to create space for learning where ideas can flourish? What do you think about? For me, it's more than just a building. It's about creating an environment of trust, of respect, where ideas can be shared and boundaries broken. I'm going to share with you a little bit about how growing up in Richmond, moving away, and coming back gave me a little bit of information about creating and holding space. Now, imagine Richmond in the early 80s. If you were around then, I heard a laugh, <laughs> you would know there were two worlds, two cities, one black and one white. Black folks, I heard, see a nod. Black folks, and I heard, mm-hmm. Black folks didn't go into white neighborhoods. White folks didn't go into black neighborhoods. Everyone just kind of stayed in their spaces. Nobody crossed the river. In 1982, I was a ninth grader. I was in a large, predominantly white school right outside the city limits in one of the counties. The third day of school, my mother picked me up in the middle of the day and drove me to a house in the city. And I am confused at this point, because why did I leave my big old giant school? I was in history class. Why did I leave my big school to come to a house in the city? I came to understand that this house was a school. It's open high school. Open high school was created 10 minutes earlier, 10 years earlier, <laughs> to provide a space for students to come together to learn, regardless of race, neighborhood, or economic status. Y'all remember the hit TV show, Fame? Kids dumping on top of the tables? Well, we brought that same enthusiasm to learning. As you can see, people are hanging off the pillars there. Now, at Open High School, the city was our classroom. I had Tai Chi at Second Presbyterian Church. I swam at the Calhoun Recreation Center in Gilpin Court Housing Projects. And I had math class at the Adult Learning Center. We went into spaces that would otherwise not have been available to us, and we were there to learn. Now, this wasn't enough of a shock to the system. On Saturdays, I was dropped off at another school, which was not a school. It was a mathematics and science center. This space was created in 1966 by superintendents as a way to have students come together to learn, regardless of race, neighborhood, or economic status. And just like at Open High School, at the Mathemat Mathematics and Science Center, we had classes all over the city, all over the state, birding in Shenandoah, camping in Chincoteague, and my favorite, being in the labs at MCV. And during one Saturday program, we were studying biorhythms. We were jumping all over the city, doing all kind of analysis. And our last stop was a Richmond Times-Dispatch. And some well-meaning reporter caught this picture. In the South, this is the part when you say, bless their hearts. <laughs> now imagine the statement that this photo made in the Richmond I described, in my Richmond. You have two students here, one black, one white. One from a city school, one from a county school. Both sharing physical space and intellectual space. The experiences that students like me had were a direct result of the intentionality of parents and superintendents to create, but not just to create, but to hold these spaces open for us to learn. And as a result, I had two of the most transformative experiences of my young life. So I did another shock to the system at this point, so I decided I'm going to go to New York City. I got on a point at Bird Airport, it was Bird Field at that point, and I went to New York City to become a medical doctor. Although I love the campus at Columbia and the classes, and I really loved the high drama of the emergency room, I found that my passion was working with students. And I knew that I'd rather teach math and science than become a medical doctor. So I became a teacher. Yes. And as a teacher, the city was our classroom. I chose to work in schools that had as their mission creating and holding space for families. At one school, the Muscoda New School in Washington Heights, Upper Manhattan, we had so much diversity in that school. We had parents from all over the world. 
Many were first-generation immigrants. Many spoke Spanish. Some only spoke Spanish. And while I was, I was grooving, I was using the usual practice that teachers do, Grace, como do you say da da da? Maximiliano, bring your brother here to help me talk to your mother. But I couldn't create that space that I wanted. I remember something that Nelson Mandela said. If you talk to a person, a language they understand, that goes to their head. If you talk to a person in their own language, that goes to their heart. I took that to heart. And I used my summer to travel abroad to learn Spanish. It was challenging. Talk about past and perfect in Spanish. I don't even know what it is in English. It was challenging. <laughs> but it was well worth it. One day back in my school, my classroom at Muscoda New School, a kid just kind of walks in my door, eyes downcast. I think there was a dimple, a kind of a shy smile. It was Bienvenido. Bienvenido had just come from the Dominican Republic, did not speak English. And when I found out what he liked, I could not wait to talk to his mother. I ran up to her at the end of the day, and I said, Señora, yo soy maestra de Bienvenido, y Bienvenido le gusta a ti, pero es muy importante que tú le con él en español. He loves some sharks. <laughs> This is him reading a book that he wrote in Spanish about sharks. Bienvenido loves sharks and reads to him often in Spanish. Spanish is cool. Spanish is great. When I said that to that parent, her face lit up. So did his. And in that moment, I realized that I could create and hold space for families and for students. And that this creating and holding space changes lives. It opens up possibilities. So here we are, three decades later, and I have been all over the world, I have been all over the country, writing, researching, working. And I chose to come back home, right back to Richmond, Virginia. And in fact, I'm right back at the Math and Science Center. I am the executive director at the Math and Science Center. It's now called the Math Science Innovation Center. And we reach 120,000 students a year. How often in one's life do you have the ability to create space, a multiplicative, exponentially powerful, transformative experience for students in the exact same spot that that happened for you. I have that honor, and I have that challenge. I'm not a teenager now. I'm an adult. I know how to create and hold space. The irony is not lost on me, however, that I am an African-American woman running a regional STEM center, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Disciplines that do not hold space for people who look like me, even as the executive director. But I know that when I show up and hold that space, lives are changed. Theirs, yours, and mine. I felt the weight of this work one day when I was opening a letter from a funder. And I realized I had secured funding for 200 students to have a STEM experience during the summer. These students from a severely under-resourced neighborhood and I was so excited for them to take classes in nanoscience, biomedical engineering, and more. I wanted this experience. It needed to happen so badly, and it was going to happen. I had that feeling all over my body. I had to run in my little itty-bitty bathroom and cry, a full-body ugly cry, the one where your body is shaking. <laughs> Another occasion, I went to work on a Saturday, and there were kids all over working on their rockets. And I was stepping over rockets, stepping over kids. Don't step on a rocket, because that's like a thing. I was stepping over kids, trying not to get hit by the projectiles. And a sight of two students stopped me right in my tracks. Student from a rural school, student from a city school, both together, sharing physical space and intellectual space. And that took me right back to 1982. And I realized, even if they didn't realize it, that they were learning something about each other. They were breaking down those barriers. 
destroying those assumptions. They were learning who they are, what they like, what they think. This work has to happen. Think about when you create space in your corner of the world. Where do you use your gifts? Do you use them, use them in your community? At your job? At your dinner table? It is challenging. But well, you can do it. Create those spaces. In my case, students need me to create these spaces. And here's the secret. It doesn't happen by accident. It doesn't happen because you want it to happen. It happens because you are intentional about making it happen. Create these spaces. <laughs> I love this picture. Wrestle them into being, even if you have to have a full body cry in a little itty bitty bathroom. Use your talents, use your gifts, make these Make these spaces happen. But don't just make them happen. Don't just create them. Hold on to them. Hold them open. Create and hold these spaces, and then do it again and again and again. Thank you. Thank you.